All right, just a quick one before we get going. So please don't take anything you hear in today's episode as financial advice. Please speak to a trained professional if you do wish to participate in markets. Crypto is inherently risky and you will lose all your money, particularly if you're listening to us for financial direction. So enough of that. Please give us a like, subscribe, enjoy the show and see you next time. Welcome back. Another episode of Still Early. Today, we've got Charles from Nifty Island. I think it's, this must be the coolest product in the whole industry at the minute. <laughs> I've been uh, looking at it, playing around with it, wondering how we can get the Lark collection on there. Um, but I'm sure Charles is going to take us all through this today. But uh, th- thanks for joining us, man. I pre- appreciate you taking the time out. Good to be here. Good to be here. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, taking the time as well. And any any collection you want in game we can usually get it in within within a day or, or so so definitely doable oh man give me these two weeks to go back home i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna have a whole host of questions for you of how we can do that <laughs> sounds great sounds great that's our bread and butter yeah um so just before we start um do you want to kind of set the scene like what brought you into where you're at now with with nifty and like was there any kind of connected path that kind of got you to where you are today and then we i just want to kind of pick your brain on, on the product and what you guys are building yeah yeah i think um for me always been interested in crypto or for a very long time i have been and in particular i've been interested in what its consumer form factor is going to ultimately look like because it's been this technology with so much potential but ultimately a kind of unclear path to being used by lots of people. That's that's kind of always been the, the sort of the trouble of, for it, right? It's clearly there's so much you can build and do. And and for people who enjoy squinting at a nascent technology and seeing what's possible with it, it's very exciting. But for an average user, people wonder why. And I think the primary area that I've focused in on over time from working in crypto for a long time and doing stuff in DeFi and and in other sectors of crypto is the consumer experience of being a crypto person on the internet and and what it means to use the internet in a crypto or Web3 way. To me, that's always meant deeper internet community, a more kind of participative, heroic way of using the internet. And I thought, you know, NFTs are a real like embodiment of that use case of uh, of crypto. So it's not just about money. It's also about behaving in a different way on the internet and enjoying the internet in a different way. And, uh, and yeah, so I think like that for me has been the kind of core thing that I've latched onto has been this idea that crypto's consumer form factor will be like deeper internet communities, this kind of more participative fun way of being on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as you say, there's, uh, there's so many great products out there that just, people are one just completely unaware of or two this the like barrier to entry is just kind of so difficult to kind of the user user onboarding journey and I, i've said this a million times but feel, felt like we kind of speed ran the full history of finance and then couldn't even get wallets right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right we still managed yes. to do that on on metamask which is kind of amazing but that aspect of it is has been quite lacking hasn't it yeah it has it has i think to me, the so it's it's interesting because there's sort of this question of like, are people not getting involved in crypto because it's not easy enough to get into crypto, right? Like the wallet infrastructure isn't there, or are they not getting involved because there's not enough of a pull? There's not enough of something interesting that they want to be a part of. And I think what we've seen so far is that people get pulled in for bull runs, you know, periodically, and I think that will continue to happen. And they overcome the UX and UI friction because there's money on the other, other side and people pour in in one form or another. Um, but what I don't think we've seen have really been that many. And, and so so I guess where and so that is the one area you've seen real mass adoption. And that's the one area where you've seen good UI UX is probably the centralized exchanges like Coinbase or Binance. Like these are thoroughly usable products. They work. Uh, and so I think. You, you see the UI problems get fixed where there's an enduring pull where someone's like found a business that can, you know, actually use, you know, get millions of people to enjoy crypto. Uh, once there's that kind of pull, people figure out the wallet stuff. Um, at least that's my, view. yeah. Yeah. Like if there's much as, if there's a large enough incentive or the perceived incentive to do so, like I think last season you had, 
kind of like grandmas on TikTok doing how to stick Wonderland time and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So it's just or like how to like people on TikTok figuring out how to um like leverage loop UST and <laughs> stuff like that, which as I say, if there is a perceived that if there is a perceived incentive outcome, then people will overcome the 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 barriers to entry, I suppose. But um if, without boring people to death on the history of DeFi, um what can you kind of give people who are coming in a little bit cold what you like a high level of what you guys are building? Um and then as I say I've got a lot of kind of side tangential points to to pick apart there. Definitely, definitely. So in the most tangible sense, what we're what we're building is an open game world for all of Web3 to play with. Uh, one that's driven by crazy prizes, wild user-generated content, all the best communities in crypto being there, playing as your board ape, playing as your pudgy penguin, and then just genuinely novel game, fun gameplay that wants to be shared on X. So it's really like a novel type of UGC game world that's at the heart of what we're doing. So a game world built by the users. Um, but there's more to what we're trying to do. I think really the, the goal overall is to try to improve the user experience around NFTs uh, and have a platform where you can show up uh, and acquire cool NFTs and immediately have the best experiences you can have around them. You know, winning a prize, connecting with cool people, socializing, playing a game. So yeah, that's really, that's, that is the goal is to try to build a cool, platform that realizes the value of nfts um and uh but right now it's yeah it's an open game world that has a lot of novel properties that's that's kind of what we have right now yeah so say i've got a a pudgy or potentially in the future you've got a a, a lark nft from from us like what would if i got if i got i go to nft like what what can i what can i do when i'm over there like what would the kind of user journey be like i suppose Definitely. So right now you could connect your wallet through Delegate or Vulcan or directly. We'll see that you own a Pudgy Penguin, for example, and we'll start unlocking things right away in the, on this platform for you. So one thing we immediately unlock is we have a play to airdrop campaign. You'll be made eligible for that. You can start farming our, to- our native token. So that, that's one thing. But uh, more, more in terms of the substance of the platform, you also uh, will unlock cool custom avatars. You can unlock a whole 3D library of stuff that you can use and build a cool island with and play games around. Uh, so basically your NFT unlocks like a bunch of usable objects in game. And then you also unlock access to the community in game too. So that means you have your own community page. You can see what your friends are up to who also hold pudgy penguins. Uh, you can connect with them easily and then you can compete with each other in crazy prizes. So we have like token gated competitions we call quests where you could be like, which pudgy penguin holder can have the most popular island this week or who can be the fastest on this time trial race. So that kind of stuff. Um, so really it comes down to like, you get to embody the pudgy penguin in game and utilize all these assets that are themed around the IP. Uh, you get to connect with your fellow holders and then you get to play games and engage in competitions that are token gated uh, and you can farm a token while you're doing it. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point on the IP because it feels like... Um... There's like a lot of roadmaps, particularly for the early days of NFTs, where it's quite, it's quite interesting that you guys have built this as like a kind of a blanket product across basically all NFTs. Whereas a lot of NF, individual NFT roadmaps said, oh, we're going to build towards something akin to this. <laughs> so it's just been like, and 99.99% didn't deliver, by the way. So um, so this is a really, a really interesting take on like, how you can then leverage the individual IP into a different product. What, um, how, 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 how are you going about choosing which kind of communities you kind of target to onboard? Like is the internal demand from your own community or is there just some kind of glaringly obvious ones? Like how, how do you kind of think about that? So at the beginning, when we were building during the bear market and we weren't a live product and we were trying to figure out, you know, who do we work with initially? Who do we you know, partner with and try to get on board such that we can learn if this is a good idea and, you know, see if people will use it. During that period, we tried to find some proxies for which communities were the most active because floor price is one thing, you know, it's a kind of a vanity mm-hmm. metric, but 
but it doesn't always line up with like real people actually doing stuff around them. You know, there's definitely some like projects with high floors where there's not that many people kind of keeping the lights on or, or less than some of the more scrappy projects. And, and so we looked at it and we looked at things like Twitter mentions and I uh, got a little bit of a sense of discord activity levels too, and tried to say like, okay, where are there actually people? And we focused on those communities. And so there's a bunch of them that we worked with, kid, like a kid called beast or forgotten runes or sappy seals and, and more uh, cyber Kongs that all kind of to us were like, okay, these are really live, like good communities. And uh, there's, there's many more that I haven't listed, but, but those are a few. And the, um, and so we started there based on some proxy of like liveness and, and there being people involved. And uh, from there, since we've launched, really, we've taken the approach of saying, let's cast as broad a net as possible. So our goal is, if you want to be in Nifty Island, it shouldn't be something where you have to be like, oh, we have to, you know, meet with the Nifty Island board and we have to take, you know, three months of planning. It should just be kind of like you wanted to have an Instagram account or a YouTube account. You're just like, well, it kind of makes sense. Like, why wouldn't our community be able to leverage this world? It's a fun thing that NFT, NFT people use. And our view really is that the NFT space is way, way too small for it to be a world devoted to a small number of communities. It's just way too small. Uh, it's like a, it's, you're dead in the water if it's only for one community or two. Um, so, so we cast as broad a net as possible. Anyone who wants to play. Uh, can can play. Sick. Yeah. So say um, in a hy hypothetical sense, <laughs> we want to get the all the lab holders over there. What would like? How much of a heavy lift would it be on our end, on your end? Like, what does that whole process look like? Yeah. So it would. It shouldn't be. Shouldn't be difficult at all. Uh, the what we what we typically ask is that the the projects that want to get integrated, if they have, if there's, if they want an avatar in game, if they want their own custom music or 3d structures or weapons or whatever it is, they should, they should give us those. They should say, Hey, here's the assets we want in game. And then we're really good at integrating them and making sure that they're token gated and playable for everyone. And we can support a broad array of assets. So you shouldn't have to build anything specifically for nifty. And, uh, and so if you come, you know, to the table with game ready assets ready to go, then we should be able to get you in right away. Like it could be the same day, uh, really easily, no cost. If you don't have any game ready assets made yet, then you'll have to make some. And that can be as simple as making like a single avatar, like one mascot that kind of everyone plays as in the community. And that, that works really well and isn't too hard. So, you know, at worst, you know, if you want to just take the most basic path and you have nothing ready, you should be able to get in in a week or two. Uh, but if you come prepared, you should be able to get in the same day. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of our, the, one of our kind of researchers who does the the newsletter, his keeps, he keeps telling me his, his brother's in like in-game designer as well. So <laughs> I'm starting to join a lot of dots here. <laughs> I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver to anyone who's holding a, a lot, but, uh, like the more I kind of look at what you guys are building it, the more it kind of makes sense, particularly because it's like a community driven and community focused, uh, I suppose, collection that's built around kind of crypto research. So there could be something really, really useful and beneficial there, but I think it'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. absolutely. And it's, and it's costless. So why not? Do you, do you have, um, do you have a marketplace for builders or do you do a lot of the integration heavy lifting like let's say someone with no technical capabilities whatsoever they come but they've got a collection they want to kind of this all singing all dancing island and they want all the bells and whistles like do you have a marketplace mm -hmm. for that so we there's a few things we have one the, the marketplace we have is for 3d assets for game ready assets so if anyone wants to come to Nifty Island and create a game ready NFT, like a sword or an avatar or a building or a mixture of those things, they can do it through our web app and people can buy those and utilize them if they want. So, so we have that. And then in terms of connecting people with 3d talent, if they don't know the first thing about how to get their collection in game, or maybe they don't want to make an Island on their own, we have lots of preferred builders and studios who will happily, you know, take the work, I think. So, um, so yeah, yeah, there's a, we can, we can definitely make it really easy for someone who doesn't want to, or doesn't know how to put in the, the time. Yeah. Um, so we were talking off air, there's, uh, we are speaking about incentives. Like how, how do you, how do you generally think about incentives in this space? Do you think, obviously it's a, I, I believe it's a huge unlock being able to kind of tokenize and 
coordinate around like a, a shared incentive, particularly on chain. Um, do you have like a high level of how you think about incentives? And I know I kind of want to pick your brain on like the second second wave of the airdrop as well. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I think uh, it's a few things. I mean, so I think one massive factor here is just sort of if you're issuing incentives that are coming from within your ecosystem, like they're kind of like endogenous to it. So you're issuing like a native token or NFTs you've minted as the project, right? That's one type of incentive. And it's a type of incentive that can only run so long. You can't print new tokens and, and new NFTs forever. That's It's a useful thing and it's a great thing to kind of bootstrap a network, but you can't do it forever. And then the other side of it is incentives that third parties provide because they see value in the platform and they think, ah, it'd be good to distribute something to users of this platform. Those are, that to me is a really key distinction. Uh, and so for us, we're doing play to airdrop. That's totally an endogenous kind of incentive. We're giving out Island token, it's our token. People are earning it by playing and that's allowing us to get everyone excited about the game world and get people contributing. And you know, uh, tens of thousands of islands have been made as a result, so it, it's great. Um, but the other things we're working on are all about creating incentives where other people are distributing things through the game. So we have our quest system that's been in development for a while. We're adding to it and opening up new quest types. But the way we see it is eventually Nifty Island becomes the most fun place to give away whitelist spots on the next big hyped mint. Because you come in and you say, hey, I'm, give, I'm doing this mint. I don't want to give it all away to bots. I want to create a meaningful experience where people can kind of engage with the IP and have fun and People can earn a whitelist spot either by chance or skill. And you may just give away those spots through in-game challenges in Nifty Island. That's just one example. There's some other more elaborate stuff we're working on for the future for after play to airdrop, where the incentives will come from outside of Nifty Island to play Nifty. So that that's the biggest thing, like on a high level. The, the, the services in crypto that have stayed around the longest are things like Binance or Coinbase, where effectively the incentive to use the product is there's cool coins and tokens that have appeared uh, that they didn't issue, right? And that people come to the platform to trade. And so for your platform to be lasting, you have to have incentives that come from outside of the platform. So that's uh, that's that's the biggest thing that I think about with incentives. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can't just come, continue to inflate away your own token and, and dilute loyal holders and, uh, for like a lifetime, which is obviously not going to upstand. That's kind of glaringly obvious. But yeah, I think... Um, there's obviously with everything that's going on now, I think people are extremely tired of kind of points <laughs> and they're extremely tired of just, it's not even the fact of points. I don't think, I think it's sometimes it can be just perceived as if there's nothing else going on, it's just like deposit into our lending and borrowing protocol and then point it's, it feels a bit half assed and a bit lazy. Um, so it, it, I think the whole incentive program and how you engage people and, how you try and mitigate and limit purely civil attacks on on points programs or airdrop farming and stuff like that. I think it has to hit, it has to revolve. Um, and I wonder if there's anything that you, I know you probably can't give that away, but if there's anything that you you could offer additional protocols, third party protocols, or NFT platforms that um, you know can help be less boring, <laughs> to put it politely. Yeah, oh man, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, because. I think like the the thing that people perceive, I, I think you're right. It's not that people are tired of points per se. It's that they're kind of tired of like these nihilistic point programs where it's like, you're kind of like, okay, nobody believes in this. No one, no one's interested in this fundamentally. We're all getting the points so that we can sell it later, basically, right? Like that's the, the core thing that's going on. And, and I think it's also boring because people know that if everyone's trying to sell it, then it probably yeah. <laughs> won't perform very well in the long run, right? Like it's it like every, people are excited about being a part of something that's like, you know, the next Ethereum or Bitcoin or something really like maybe not even that big, but like Chainlink or something where like there's a group of people who are really passionate about it and they take it way further than people expect. That's kind of the most fun in crypto is to be part of one of those big run-ups, like an Axie thing, right? Or uh, mm -hmm. I, there's a bunch of other examples, but these sort of projects where there's like truly a dedicated, like excited base of people that are pushing it and, and really want it to go all the way. Uh, and so I think like for these projects, like, you know, you're mentioning, like, I, the thing is, I, I think nothing beats like actually trying to add value and trying to create mm -hmm. an ecosystem where 
you know, you're putting a token out there, but something new is being created. That's kind of how I think of it too now is like, if you're issuing a token, it should be that the, t- the, 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 the token coming into the world and being used, like creates something, you know? And so in our case, it's like tens of thousands of islands, all these communities interacting in a way they've never interacted before. Tons of 3D art, tons of games being played, social media being used in a different way. Uh, NFT projects changing the way they act and think about games. So like that, that to me is like real activity and that, 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 that makes a token worthwhile. Uh, uh, but but if the token's totally stale, it's kind of pointless if it doesn't you know generate new activity, yeah. new behavior. And um, you, you're saying you're on this like the second wave of your own token token airdrop. So like what uh, what could what do people need to be aware of with with regards to that? Yeah, this will be good because this will be the first conversation I've had where I think I can talk about it openly because it will go out <laughs> tomorrow. Right. And uh, <laughs> and so so this will be I assume by the time this airs will be good. Um, so yeah, wave two of the airdrop goes live on, it'll be March 26th, uh, in the morning. Uh, and wave, wave one of our airdrop was really about getting all of these enthusiast NFT holders to play the game. And we were careful, we were really careful about who we gave access to the airdrop because when you launch this big complex game world, it's going to break if tons of people flood in. So you kind of need to almost control the flood a little bit. You don't need like 500,000 people on day one, or it's going to break. So instead we decided to say, Hey, let's only, let's be really stingy with airdrop eligibility. Let's grant it to diehard NFT people, these communities and have them all pour, come in and, and acquire a user base. That's like thousands and thousands, but not like hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Right. And, uh, and so that was, that was step one for us. And then wave two, we're adding a bunch of cool improvements to the game, but the, one of the core things we're doing is we're opening up airdrop participation. So we're granting eligibility to people who didn't have it before. And then we're also letting all the active players of Nifty Island invite other people and form what we call growth gangs. So they basically get growth codes. They can share those with new users. And if users sign up through their code, then they get a boost on the airdrop. The recipients of the code will get like a boosted airdrop tier. And the people who send it out will earn airdrop points whenever those players play. So the OGs now have a strong incentive to bring in like two, five, 10 friends. And so our hope is you take a user base of thousands and empower them to pull in, you know, 10 X that number. And, uh, and that, that's what we're trying to do next is a bit of like a viral growth system that revolves around the airdrop and around a system called growth gangs. And will this be the, the final wave or is there like an allotted number of waves or is that still to be decided? It's, I guess it's to be announced, it's to be announced. Yeah. So we, we haven't, we haven't confirmed it yet. There's not going to be too many, like we're very well aware that people get fatigued of these things if you go too long. But on the other hand, I think our users and like our people who are most passionate about the game can see that the air, these airdrop campaigns are like a vital period to grow a platform. Uh, and you want to use them. You want to make sure that mm-hmm. you use them and you iterate a little bit and you add more. Uh, so, so yeah, it's uh, so there, there's a limited number of waves. It's not going to be too many uh, by any means, um, and I, I can't say how many there will be yet. All right, awesome. Um, so kind of a side question, but I think this kind of ties in. Like, how do you think, particularly the crypto and Web three space, is changing up? Like, um, I suppose creator economies and particularly communities that are, that are online. How, how are you guys kind of playing into that? Yeah. Um, so I think the main thing that you're seeing with crypto creator economies, I think a big part of it is the NFT story. So it's like you're seeing people be able to reward deep engagement rather than shallow engagement. That's it, numerous. So like an ad or a click, if that's how you're monetizing. It's shallow engagement. If you're buying an NFT for like, you know, the price of a laptop, say, that's incredibly deep engagement. Like you're really signaling that you're really about that. And what spawns from that are communities, basically, when people show that they're deeply aligned with something and they have upside in it, they form communities pretty fast. And so I think the creator economy you see around crypto is about like deep attachment. uh, And it's also about communities that are all financially aligned. And, uh, and so, so I think that's the main thing, you know, that, and so for us, we see ourselves as we, our tagline is where communities play. And so, 
we want to be the place where communities play, where internet communities play. And we think that NFTs and crypto are the future of internet communities. Basically, we think like a lot of the internet is kind of just scrolling, you know, you're staring at pictures of celebrities or dogs or whatever it is. And we think there's more that you can do there. Uh, there's more uh, that you can do revolving around those communities. One sec, sorry. You kind of, you mentioned it there. Like, I don't, I don't know if this is like, this is completely off the cuff. And I don't know if you guys have kind of thought about it or if this is even an angle for you guys, but there is a lot of people still trying to figure out. And I don't think anyone's completely cracked it about kind of, if you look at a traditional web to product, e-commerce store, SaaS software, whatever, there's a very kind of clear, well-trodden path with regards to advertising and top of funnel and, and kind of conversion at the bottom. I don't think a lot of people in, I still think a lot of people are trying to figure it out in crypto because it, it's a very different landscape and you can't just apply traditional web two rules to, to crypto. But is the is there any thoughts around ads with within the game or like, or even just like how you think about kind of advertising in, in, in the space in general, really? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, hmm. So yeah, I think it's a, I think it's not like a near term path for us. Uh, so I think like it, it really works. That kind of stuff works really well at some kind of super scale that's where that becomes really interesting. Like if you have some platform that's like an Instagram or a Facebook, you can direct a lot of attention kind of makes sense. It's kind of not what web three users, like an enthusiast users, I think want, like, I don't think they're excited about a platform kind of monetizing their attention. Like, I feel like it's, it's not in the ethos of it. I feel like, and, and I feel like web three presents so many alternate models that maybe are still being proven out and, and we'll see which ones work, but I feel there are better models uh, right now. So it's not, it's not what I spend a lot of time thinking about the ad driven stuff. And, and honestly, it's also for the reason that it's not how video games, you know, make money outside of like mobile, like mobile does. And there's some free to play games that make money through ad spend, but a lot of the money is spent through my microtransactions or buying the game or in-game commerce like that. That is the brunt of it. It is. I, I think there may be maybe within mobile, it's a significant portion, but on a platform like Roblox, it's not advertising, and, and Minecraft is not advertising, or Fortnite. I don't think the, near any anywhere near the majority of revenue is through advertising. So, I think both because Web three people don't love it as a model, and I think there are other models, and also because games don't necessarily need it. It's not one I, I look at too too much. Yeah, that's a that's a good point, and um. So obviously we've kind of seen an explosion, a trailing off, and now the kind of murmurs of a kind of revival in what looks to be kind of like Web3 social or social applications and consumer apps in the, in the space. Like there is a, like obviously a huge crossover between you guys and, and, and like social applications, particularly with like this middle Venn diagram with, with gaming as well. So how, how do you think the web free social space looks currently? Do you think we're just beginning to kind of see stuff that can be interesting, how you guys kind of positioning to, to take advantage of that as well? Yeah. Yeah. So it is, uh, it's, it's tricky. I mean, the, I think what you find the really tough thing about consumer in general, I think, and it's, it's so different than the way we thought about crypto startups prior where a lot of the bets that we're most attracted to are things where it's like, oh, I see, it's like a, it's like Ethereum, but it's much faster. And oh, if there's going to be this global computer, this is just a faster one; it will win. You know, these sorts of bets are like you're like, oh, well, this chain needs like a perp dex, or this chain needs, you know, uh, uh, data availability or something, right? It's like a lot of the bets that we're used to making in crypto are kind of infra, and they're almost bets that you can evaluate kind of axiomatically. Right. Where you're just sort of like, OK, right. If that's true, you know, you have to dig into your priors and know if, you know, this chain is really faster or if it needs a, or, you know, if this perp dex will be any good. But but basically you can almost evaluate them axiomatically. And then with consumer, you're instead kind of really looking at like more nebulous things of like, OK, what do consumers want and how can you build an experience that they're excited about? And that's way more unclear. So just the answer will be less satisfying, I think, than than it can be for some of those ventures. But that, that all being said, yeah, I think with consumer, what you're what you're really looking for is somewhere where you can offer an experience that's just like zero to one better. Like it has to have that kind of new magic where 
when someone tries like Facebook for the first time or Instagram or Amazon, like it's just dramatically better, even if even if not for everyone initially, at least for a niche of people. It's like, wow, this is so different and so much better. And um, and, and so with the consumer apps you're seeing, like with us, we try we're trying to say like, hey, let's make a game that's really different than any other game because it leverages crypto. And we're not all the way complete in that. There's a lot more we can do to make Nifty feel radically weird and new. Um, but that's the goal is like make a game that feels totally different, uh, that, that realizes some values around crazy prizes and deep communities and UGC and kind of virality and, and the desire to be shared, right? That, that is uh, way different than any other game. Uh, that, that's the goal. And so with other consumer apps like Farcaster and stuff, I think you, that's the kind of stuff you want to keep an eye out with for them too, is have they found something where it's like zero to one different? And I think they're kind of like us where they have the beginnings of something, right? And then they're probably trying to find those killer kind of experiences, those really high value experiences that are totally different that you can't do on Twitter. Um, so that, that really, I think that's what you're looking for, right? With, with these consumer apps, it's, it's not easy and it's like a lot of work to do it. Um, but you're looking for something that's like truly unique. Uh, you can't get it anywhere else. It's powered by crypto and that's why it's fun. Yeah, hundred percent. And, um, by six, three who's our head of, head of research will laugh at me for asking this question. Cause he said, like, I bring it up way too much, but, um, how do you think about kind of large portion of the, the planet that, uh, are using handheld devices and being mobile first when it comes to kind of gaming, like, how do you guys kind of accommodate that? Think about that. Like, am I completely deluded? <laughs> so I feel like I repeat myself on this and people laugh at me every time I say it. Right, 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 right. Um, I don't think you're deluded with that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think it's, it's very reasonable. Um, yeah, I think it's like, um, I think that is right. I think the question speaks to like, you know, you want to get a big volume of users in. And that is, of course, really important. Um, I think my view has been that like the first thing you want to do is create something like really special, something where you're like, okay, we have something like we have lightning in a bottle. Now we need to kind of scale it out to a lot of people. And for us building on PC and Mac to start uh, was a good way of accessing the enthusiast market that we were going for, which is we're looking for the crypto enthusiasts and the crypto gaming enthusiasts to start. Right. And we want to onboard them in some numbers. And then we want to grow it out from there. And so we will go to mobile eventually. And uh, and I think mobile is going to crush it with gaming, particularly because mobile is just going to become the same as PC as, as basically playing on a desktop because the phones are getting mm -hmm. so strong. There's going to like, right, you can you can play pretty incredible stuff on like a new generation iPhone or or on a newer Android phone. And that's just only going to continue to be true. So it'll be it won't be long before it's like really trivial to run anything we would want to do in nifty on a phone. Uh, so, so yeah, I do think that's going to be important. Uh, and it speaks to the, the need for scale, which we'll get to, but for now, we're just really focused on like making that awesome, unique thing and polishing the hell out of it, uh, which is kind of the unsexy phase that, you know, you can't skip. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think, so it feels like, um, we're at a strange point in in time with regards to kind of people's attention spans and everything being TikTokified and everything has to be an instant gratification. And do you think that the gamification aspect, which you guys are kind of bring into, I suppose to the web three industry as a whole, but do you think that kind of spills over into a lot of other things? And like, how, how do you kind of think about that to kind of optimize for that? Cause I don't think it's going away anytime soon. No, it's not. Yeah, it's definitely not. Um, yeah, I think for us, you know, we're trying to make a game that wants to be shared basically where it wants to be on your timeline. It wants to have a TikTok video made about it. Right. And, and so that, 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 that's the important thing to me is like spectacle and the way that games and services are, will be marketed is going to be, uh, rooted in, uh, in the feed and in like short form video, all that for sure. So the, the way we, the way we look at that right now is a couple fold, like our main channels for UA right now for user acquisition are Twitter and discord, you can easily share a link to your Island on any of those places. So I think nifty Island is a game that you can uniquely share on like Twitter and discord right now, because you can have your own Island or a friend's Island and you can just share it on Twitter and people hop in directly from Twitter. 
There's not many games where that's true. You can do it with like a friend code for like a Fortnite experience and stuff. It's not quite the same though. And for most games, you don't really jump from the timeline into the game. And the game doesn't really like speak to the timeline in the same way. So, so, so that, that's one thing we've done uh, to try, to, for the, you know, for that. But, and then I think the other thing you'll see is really funny UGC and like letting the game be kind of a stage for players to create like wacky scenarios, something you're going to see more out of us. And, and that stuff can do really well on short form. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the point I think is you're totally right. And you've got to have a game that wants to be shared. I think it's really hard to break in as a game that, that, that doesn't make sense to be shared. There's so many genres of games that don't make sense to share. And so I think they don't succeed in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so where do you think, and you've probably got a unique perspective on this, but where do you think we are in the whole NFT kind of life cycle? Because obviously we had crazy, crazy, crazy stuff happening last time around, but um, not to kind of speak floor price or anything, but I think the industry as a whole bottomed probably around the same time that, that all the markets did and people completely wrote everything off. But like, what, what do you think's next? What do you think we're at with it? Like, is there anything you're seeing that's interesting and, and where do you think we're headed? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think what happened like in 2021, it's when any new asset or maybe specifically crypto asset comes along and nobody knows what it's for. No one knows how to value it. And there's all these different stories that get told about it. Right. And, and I think what you saw with NFTs, was this view that having an nft had to be like building this like massive conglomerate or like a startup like you know where it's like okay they have to be a game studio they're making movies they're doing this and that right and uh and i think that is to me like the vertically integrated pfp and it was like the big story where everyone had to build the metaverse on their own you know everybody had to have this like massive roadmap and this whole strategy uh and it's not that some projects won't do that and uh and they won't have strategies and they won't do things. But I think it's becoming a lot more honed in terms of what an NFT is for. And the pattern I see is the projects that have survived and then kind of come out of the bear market with some energy are the ones that really focus on being an online brand and community. Like that's their focus first and foremost. They're not, you know, trying to be a game studio first. There may be a game studio. Some of them might be able to do that. But first and foremost, they're this amazing kind of online syndicate that makes being on the internet more fun. And so I think you're seeing a refi- many of these PFP projects that are sticking around, like kind of refine their mission and really focus on that. And so you've got like Pudgy Penguins or Sappy Seals, right? Like a couple of the kind of like darlings of this past, you know, six month period. I think they both play into that. Like they're first and foremost, really great communities online. And then the things Luca's doing with like the, the toys and with Walmart and on Instagram, like this meta is like, it's like, okay, broaden top of funnel awareness. And then pull some people into this community where they buy the NFT. But the core thing is the community and why it's better. And they're always emphasizing, like, you know, look at all the founders that hold our PFP. Look at all the people you can connect with, right? Wob says the same thing with Sappy Seals. Uh, and, and there's many other communities that are doing this as well. So I think we're seeing, pe- us, we're seeing like, the NFTs become a more known quantity. And I think we're starting to inch towards what they should be valued around. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I think the other thing we're probably going to see, and I, th- I hope we're the beginning of this, is more open platforms being created that add utility to NFTs writ large, because this is part of that, like, I think, bad vertically integrated PFP story was that, you know, what makes a PFP cool is that you have Twitter and Discord, and now Nifty, and and, and, and everyone was have, being forced to make everything on their own. It should be that there are more services that you can use, like maybe Matrica or maybe uh, uh, or Nifty or, you know, OpenSea, Blur. Like there, there's got to be a bigger stack of services that make these things interesting. Uh, maybe Farcaster plays into that too. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where I think we're at. Like I think we've come to value them for what they are and we're seeing some projects lean into what NFTs are really good at and they're finding real success with that. And we'll see more people, I think, realize that. The other thing I'm keeping an eye out for too is new primitives. Like who's gonna launch a new way of doing a PFP community? Like a new way of dynamically adjusting the supply or seeding them in an interesting way. I think we might see more of that too. So I, I believe we'll see a whole other renaissance of NFTs. 
that will be more focused on how they can be the most effective and aligned online communities and brands, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The um, like the did you see the ERC four hundred four stuff? So. Yeah, I've seen it. I'm not like deep in it for whatever reason. I kind of mentally was like, I was like, I don't think this is going to be a thing, but maybe pill me on it if you want. I don't know. Yeah, so that's that's just basically um, for every NFT there is a, an associated token. So you could, as opposed to fractionalizing NFTs, which a lot of people tried to crack last time around, it's you freely got a liquidity pool on Uniswap with the actual token. So if you had to buy three tokens, then once you purchase them out of the liquidity pool, you automatically get sent three corresponding NFTs. There's a few dynamics where if you send an NFT to a different wallet, um, it will burn. Not if you send a, a token to a different wallet, it will burn a specific NFT and then mint you a new one when it lands in the new wallet. So there's, there's a few dynamics. I think the gas is particularly an issue I think they're trying to work on because it's, it's quite gas intensive. But it's just nice to see, as you say, like a lot more thought and innovation around, well, People want to openly trade these in a permissionless way. Um, and I think the likes of Blair and stuff like that might have still been a little bit too too complex for, for certain people, but they know if they, they know how to trade a token on Uniswap. They have the most simple UI of, of all time. So that was interesting. And your your point on what Luca was doing is doing like their their Instagram is incredible because it has absolutely zero reference to NFTs or crypto or anything. And they've got like a few million followers and they get consistently get hundreds of thousands of engagement on each each individual post and as i said it's just that huge top of funnel um where it's kind of like the product first and then kind of on crypto rails in the back which i think is really really interesting yeah agreed agreed yeah i think uh yeah i think that that's been a cool thing and then whether it's erc for or or something else it's yeah, finding new primitives for how these communities can exist and like be aligned. Because if you think about it, like a 10K is kind of a crude instrument, like it works, but you're just kind of putting out like 10,000 of something and then hoping good people buy it. And then you're trying to get them all to like kind of rally together to like be a community. And there's a lot of white space, you know, between issuing the 10K and having a cool community. And I feel like there could be a lot more incentives and you know, almost like a kind of a community score that individuals have within it, right? Like more ways, maybe I'm just advocating for more points, but, uh, <laughs> but basically, which is dangerous, but, uh, but I feel like the, these communities could be a lot easier to manage in a bottom up way too. Like it should, it, they should be more self-governing. Like, I think there's a, there's something there um, where the communities themselves could just function in a different way. Yeah, we did, we did 420. Um, one, because I think we, a lot of the perks and benefits that we want to give as, uh, to the, to the holders would, there's a, a point of diminishing return. So around that level, we can definitely get that amount of beta access, that amount of kind of whitelist, low list, and I'm not going to say the a word but potentially that as well <laughs> um but like at ten thousand, it just didn't didn't necessarily make any sense like for to try and get ten thousand whitelists or ten thousand allow lists or get ten thousand people at an event it's like we're not trying to host token 2049 here it's like <laughs> but we might be able but we might be able to do a, a, a reasonably sized meetup you know so um there was there was one interesting thing i seen where there was this kind of twitter activation uh i think it was called inspect where it would be effectively detecting profile pictures of specific communities and then like tracing their engagement and kind of creating a leaderboard that way. But I haven't really looked too much into it. Yeah, I look at it quite a lot. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and it's it is basically that. It's like looking at base looking at uh, at Twitter and then yeah, tying it to these on chain assets. So you can say like, oh, pudgy penguins, what's their global reach? Like, who how engaged are they? Who are their to- who are their top holders? Like. And it's sort of trying to measure the attention economy and then tie it to like different blockchains and different NFT assets. So it's 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 a cool product. It's really it's sweet. I know the team. Yeah, they're great. What uh, what chains do you own currently? And is there any expansion plans? We're uh, ETH L1, Polygon, and Base right now across all app functions. Yeah. And uh, and we, we basically, we think adding more chains is good, especially when it comes to like a 
pulling in NFTs. So like if you have an NFT on Solana or anywhere else that you want to pull in, you should be able to do that. Basically, you know, if you're excited about an on-chain asset, we want to let you play with it and create prizes around it and UGC and stuff like that. So yeah, so that that's uh, that's where we're at with that. We're, we're definitely going to be adding more. Awesome. Um, and is there anything else I might have missed off that you want to kind of make people aware of? Um, and we can kind of wrap it up, but I've really enjoyed the chat. But if there's anything I might have missed out, please uh, feel free to fill people in. You know, I don't, I don't think there's, I don't think too, too much. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like the, yeah, I'll just say like the kind of big mission of what we're doing really is like, can we make a game world that is fundamentally more fun to create in and more fun to play in? and more surprising and can we do it with this deep online community of people who all own the same token and then own all these nfts and they're kind of aligned so like that that's that's the overall thing we're trying to do is make a more exciting kind of vibrant creative game world and do it by harnessing the deep participation that web3 can generate on the internet both from the nft community partners we already have and then from new ones and from people who want and you know enjoy holding the token that will be coming uh from us so yeah that's kind of the big mission and i'll say too i think something people maybe get wrong with some consumer application stuff in crypto is people get less excited about it because it's not as vast as like the blockchain itself right you're kind of like well solana's you know total addressable market is like you know 500 trillion or something. Right. And it's like, you know, it's kind of easy to get excited about that. And then if someone's making like a, a version of Twitter or a game, you're like, well, how big did that get? And, and, and my view is that that is the big frame shift that people need to make is that the, where, where consumers actually start to use this stuff is going to be where a lot of value is accrued. And I think that gaming and deep online communities are the consumer form factor for this stuff. And, and so, yeah, I think being a part of a mission and a community that's trying to figure that out is is worthwhile. And I do think that's going to be the the fr- the big shift we'll see in crypto is people are like, wait, there's more chains. There's like 10x more chains than there are compelling applications, right? Like maybe more, maybe 100x more. Uh, and I think we're going to see that there'll be big winners on the application layer. And I think people should start to, you know, reshift on that. That it's really is the, the app layer is the blue ocean. And really the infra stuff is is crowded at this point. Hundred percent. So, if you're a LARP holder, I'm not making any promises, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm too intrigued not to try and pursue this. So uh, we'll be following up. Hopefully, we can get something done in, uh, in the next couple of weeks or maybe a couple Let's of months. But um, yeah, thanks thanks so much for your time, man. And uh, if there's anything you ever need, just just give us a shout and. Hopefully we'll be chatting really, really soon. (laughs) That sounds great. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for chatting. Yeah. All right. Uh, If you enjoyed that one, please give us a like, subscribe. And yeah, I'll leave any of the links below if you've You'd be able to to participate in any of the the worlds that are on uh, Nifty Island if you're part of these communities. Go and check it out. And yeah, we'll speak to you next time. Bye.